<laughs> Hi, I'm Richard Friesen with Riches Reframes. And today we're going to reframe a religion that you may never have thought about as a religion. We're going to take your normal set of filters, the way you look at the world, the way you think about a certain topic, and totally create a new frame. I grew up as an evangelical. My father was an evangelical preacher. <laughs> we had tent revival meetings. We had altar calls. We passed around the plate. We witnessed. We uh, recommitted ourselves to Christ. I took my Bible to high school. And during college, something happened. <laughs> oh, dear. I so love my religious friends and relatives. They are so good-hearted, but I could no longer stay in the process of that absolute belief in the face of everything. Now, I understand that it holds people together. It creates communities and hope and faith. Uh, it creates moral expectations. And so I support that and love those people. But here's the surprise. In California, as I go to some of my transformational groups, have, have conversations with some of my liberal and democratic friends, I found that they were religious too, in the same way. In my evangelical upbringing, we had the history of the world. It was really simple. In the beginning was the Garden of Eden. Everything was organic. There were no pesticides. The weather was perfect. It only rained uh, it, in the afternoons for a short period of time. There was fruit everywhere. Everyone was a vegetarian. Adam and Eve lived in this just perfect world until they sinned. Now, it was the woman that tempted the man, and they both blame each other and all that. But they ate of the tree of knowledge, which was forbidden. And what happened then? They were kicked out of that beautiful, perfect place because they sinned and they were sinners. And as a result, men strife, brother Cain and Abel, you know, the murder, wars. Then there was God came back for a special people. The Israelites slaughtered the Gentiles. The Gentiles slaughtered the Israelites. And the world was just horrible. But then there was salvation. Jesus came. And if you believed in Jesus, you could be saved, confess your sins. And then what was going to happen is the world was going to go through just a horrible time. The book of Revelation is about fire and brimstone and the earth burning. And it's post-millennial or pre-millennial. At some point, the the Christians and the faithful would be taken up to heaven. And in heaven, all would be perfect again, like the Garden of Eden. So what's interesting is, I talk to my liberal friends, my environmental, eco-friendly friends. And it's the same process, little different content. Man, nature used to live in harmony, you know, the sheep lay down with the tiger. <laughs> but then we started polluting. We started uh, industrializing. We used took fossil fuels out of the ground and put smoke and carbon dioxide and particulates in the air. And then the earth started to change. The environment and the ecology and the climate started to change because of our sinful pollution. So what we were going to do, what could we possibly do? We need salvation. We needed to be saved. We needed to confess our sins. And as a result, we started to recycle. We started to create electric cars. We started to sign agreements for carbon neutrality in order to bring back that beautiful Garden of Eden. You know, stop eating beef, eat organic food. Um, the recycling, the electric cars, in order to be uh, environmentally conscious. 
Now, in religions, especially the Catholic religions, not the Protestant religion that I grew up in, they had sometime in the past indulgences. So wealthy people could go out, <laughs> I almost used a naughty word, and have pleasures and drink and women and men and have orgies and have all sorts of sinful behavior, but they could buy indulgences from the priest. But we can do the same thing. We can have carbon offsets. We can buy our indulgences so that we are a good person. We can also, uh, you know, buy Teslas and electric cars. By the way, what a great deal. You buy a Tesla, you show how righteous you are and how wealthy you are at the same time. It just doesn't get better than that. Plus, you have an awesome car to drive. I mean, gee whiz. But the similarities go on. In religion, the heretics are condemned. You know, Salem witch trials. Um, if we look at the Catholicism, the heretics, and we look at the inquisitions and people that were tortured and burned and killed, oh my gosh, if you're a heretic. But is environmentalism that different? I've heard several professors talk when they suggest maybe there are alternative explanations or different weightings for uh, climate change and what's involved, you know, like solar, uh, uh, solar flares and, and maybe even earth crust shifting over the magma. And there's just uh, complications and, and they try to bring something else out. They are drummed out of business. Their publications are squelched. They don't give government funding. So just like heretics, heretics in the Catholic Church, if you disagree with it. I mean, after all, when President Obama was president, he says the science is settled. The science is settled? Wait a minute. Science is a process of a theory, of testing, of uh, finding out, making it break. You, have, you come to some sort of conclusion and then you test the conclusion. And if it doesn't test, then you go back to testing. Science is a process of constantly discounting what you know, testing and finding out where you're wrong. If the science is settled, it's no longer science. It's what, boys and girls? <laughs> it's religion. That's right, it is religion. Wow. So, what I want to leave you with is that the human mind needs to have an absolute truth and a belief. It just doesn't want to live with uncertainty or unknowing. And especially if we can attach ourselves to that belief and it makes us feel righteous and good and even better than somebody else, that is a huge huge win. So I am not, I want to be clear, I'm not talking about what are the causes of climate change. Uh, we could have another discussion about that. I am simply talking about this process. Just like I'm not saying there isn't a God and a heaven and there wasn't an Adam and Eve, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the story and the process that is almost exactly the same. So once we have religion, the problem is then we are stuck in a belief. And once we're stuck in a belief and hold on to it, then we can do real damage to ourselves. The Green New Deal is asking that we completely change our way of life, just like religions ask that we completely change our life. I don't know, when I was growing up, uh, the missionaries would bring these movies from the Philippines where they were marching with these heavy crosses and there was self-flagellation and they were beating themselves with whips. My gosh, it still feels like that. The Green New Deal feels just like that those parades of people carrying those crosses and beating themselves and wailing that we've got to have change everything in order to have salvation and save ourselves. <laughs> 
So anyway, I just want to point out the polar bear behind me there and to let you know that since the polar bears starting to count, being counted in the 70s, we've increased significantly. There's like 30,000 of them now. They're not dying. This picture brought in a ton of money. Oh, by the way, that's something else. Environmentalism is a huge, huge money-making operation. And uh, <laughs> just like the Catholic Church or many religions, uh, boy, do, uh, do they uh, make a lot of money. So this picture alone made hundreds of millions of dollars would be my guess for the environmental movement. The poor pair, polar bear on the mounting, a melting sea dying as he's drifting out um, to the ocean to, for his end of life. Not true. Polar bears are doing fine. I'm doing fine. And I want to invite you to take a look at your beliefs to see if they are evangelical in quality and if there's anything that you would like to change that might help the world be a little safer and a little better. <laughs> Rich Friesen here with Rich's Reframes. Take care.